Hey guys, this is Pavel for MeasureSchool.com and today's topic is custom reports. If you've been playing with Google Analytics for some time, you probably got to the moment when you said to yourself, okay, do I really have to pull out that many data and then try to tie them together outside Google Analytics? Or do I have to see that many dimensions and metrics in report when I only need two of them? If this is the case, then custom reports are very handy and this is the moment where you learn how to use them. So we will show three examples of custom reports types available in Google Analytics and then we will build one from the scratch which will show us whether whether there is a potential for conversion rate optimization on your website by fixing simple bugs you might have in particular devices. So let's go straight to it. If we want to build custom report from the scratch, we have to go to customization tab and then custom report. So here we are, I will minimize the left bar. And if this is the first time you are trying to build a custom report, you won't see any line here. This is just the report I prepared for you. We'll get to it later, but let's now build the report from the very scratch. So we have to do it by clicking on new custom report, and then you should see something similar like I do. What we have here, uh, first of all, the types of reports. There are three of them. Explorer, this is something you're familiar with from standard Google Analytics reports, because this is the way how 95% of reports look like in Google Analytics and then there is a flat table this will be probably something new for you and then there is a map overlay so let's build a simple one which is our explorer first of all we have to select the dimension we want to see as a data breakdown let's start from the very scratch I will choose device category as a dimension and then let's use three simple metrics so users sessions and then for example, bounce rate. So very simple configuration. We can name it as measure, measure school video and let's save it just to show you what happens once it's done. So by clicking on save and waiting for a couple of seconds, we should see something like this. This is the way how 95% of reports look like in Google Analytics. But the great thing here is that you can select the particular dimensions and metrics you're interested in. So you can see all the important data and information you're used to consume on a regular basis on one place. Since every time you create a report and save it, you can just reload it and you don't have to configure it again from the scratch. So this is the great thing about it. All of the standard features available in default reports are also available here. So for example, you can select any date range you want, any granularity, so day, week, month, everything works here. Also a segmentation if you want to, and also using any secondary dimension you want to. So this was a simple example of a Explorer type report. Let's show another type, which is flat table. So I will right now go to edit mode, and this is the second report type. I would like you now to Focus on what will happen once I click on a flat table. The metric group and dimension group will swap. So by clicking here, we can see that right now device category is above the metrics. What is the difference between these two reports? First of them is the way they look like. We will show that in a moment. But the second thing why this report is here is that in standard reports, we only can see two dimensions next to each other, right? The primary and the secondary dimension. Whereas here in this report, we can see up to five dimensions next to each other. So let me show you how it looks like. When I will start adding another dimensions here, for example, let's use operating system. Then for example, browser. For example, browser size, I'm just trying to show you how many of them is possible. And then browser version, right? You can see that I was able to select up to five of them. And if I will click on the save right now, even the report will look differently. There is no time series chart as we are used to from the default reports. But what we see here is that we see up to five dimensions and then the metrics we selected. Why this report is great? Sometimes you want to see much more granular report than just seeing two dimensions next to each other. And this is exactly where flat table takes place. As it is stated in its name, it's flat table. So the ideal way how to use this report is we can see by combination of five dimensions and three metrics, we get to 37,000 lines. So it's not easy to analyze it here. So the best approach, I guess, is to export the data outside Google Analytics 
and then play with it, for example, in Excel, Tableau or any other tool, which can also visualize the data. So by building a pivot table or any other visualization that you prefer. So just feel free to export that into any format that works for you the best and play with the data. So this was the second report type. And the third one, I will again click to edit, is called Map Overlay. This is the report you already probably spotted when you were exploring the audience and then geo table. So by going here, the first two level of drill down available here is the zoom level, which is available here, or then dimension level, which is available here. So let me, for example, switch it from continent to country. I will leave here the three metrics similar or the same as we used in the previous report. If I will click right now on save, we'll see something I guess we are all familiar with, which is a world map. And what do we see here? It's a simple visualization showing us by the darker the color, the higher the metric. Uh, right now we have selected users, so we can see there's the highest volume of users is from United States. And if we drill down by clicking on, on the map, we'll go to the lower geographical level, which in this case is a region. Even by clicking here, we can easily drill down to, in this case, to the city level. So I guess this report is pretty straightforward what you can do with it if you have international business or the business where geographical analysis is important for you. This is the great report which can help you to easily see which regions, countries or continents works best for you. So these were the three simple examples or I would say general examples I wanted to share with you. And now comes the time when I want to share with you the specific report I prepared for you to show you whether you have a potential for conversion rate optimization. So I will go to custom report and here's the one I already prepared. So let's click on it and I will show you how it's built from the scratch. If I will click on the edit right now, there's one more feature that Explorer report has. It allows us to also do drill down and it works in a way that by clicking on the upper level dimension and then by seeing a lower level dimension, the report in the lower level is automatically pre-filtered by the dimension we clicked on the upper level. I will show you that in a minute. But what I decided to build here is the report with four dimensions, device category, operating system, browser and screen resolution. And by clicking on every dimension, I will drill down lower and see whether we don't have their specific dimensions combination that will tell us okay guys you probably have a problem or potential for conversion rate optimization for a particular dimensions combination which can be operating system and browser browser and screen resolution and so on and so forth so these four dimensions and three simple metrics users bounce rate and e-commerce conversion rate let's save this report and show you the data under it I decided to choose top to bottom approach here since I want to go from the broadest device description to the lowest possible level there which would be screen resolution. So why I chose users is probably quite clear since I want to see whether a particular device or then a screen resolution has a significant volume of users. Then there is a bounce rate which is a more of a helpful metric then I decided to choose e-commerce conversion rate. It doesn't have to be necessarily e-commerce conversion rate, but any conversion rate or any conversion, which is your hard conversion by which you evaluate your website. So what do I want to show you with, with this simple exercise? I want to spot whether we don't have an issue with a particular device category and then drill down dimension. So where I would start is okay. My average conversion rate for Google Merchandise Store, <laughs> it's not mine, but Google Merchandise Store, is 2.9%. I can see the desktop is almost 4% and the mobile only 0.65, which is 8 times less than on desktop. So this is probably something where I would like to see whether I don't have any issues. So by clicking here, we'll be able to spot the drill down. Right. If I will scroll to the very top, I can see that I already have pre-filtered device category mobile. And all the data I see here are already pre-filtered. So the next dimension I chose is operating systems. As I said, I decided to choose top to bottom approach when drilling down. So Android and iOS are of course the two major ones. And I can see that even between them, there's quite a difference in conversion rate. The average is 0.65. The user distribution is almost 50-50, but I can see, okay, it's like quite a lot of difference between Android and iOS. So let's drill down to at first place to Android. I want to see whether that half percent conversion rate is pretty much the same for all the other dimensions I have, or there might be some pattern which if I will fix, 
then I can probably expect increasing conversion rates. So another dimension I have here is browser. Okay, I can see that 90% of all browsers on Android are Chrome, uh, which isn't a surprise, but going even one level lower, which is a screen resolution, let's have a look on conversion rate here so the average for all android devices on a chrome is 0.5 percent and by looking on the lines i can see okay let's have a look on line number four which has more than twice conversion rate comparing to the average okay and this is a specific resolution which has like a set twice conversion rate by going another level lower to the line number five, I can see that there's zero conversion rate. It doesn't have like very low volume of users, so more than 1000 of them, so it's probably significant, but I can have a strong assumption that there's probably something very wrong on this, on this resolution. There can be like thousand reasons for that, but this is the place where I would start. And in general, looking on the data, I would start to search for the patterns. Can this be with particular height or width of screen resolution where probably the website isn't displayed correctly? So this would be my initial thought about it. So this was the situation for the Android. If I will go back right now to the level of device category, which was mobile in this case, we saw, okay, that the iOS looks like it's working quite good. But that might be a mistake. Even though it's better comparing to Android, I would still do the same quick exercise and drilling down a bit whether I won't be able to spot something. And even here on the level of browser, I can see that, okay, it's just 15% of users who use Chrome as a default browser on a Safari. The conversion rate is twice as good as comparing to Safari one, but since there's much more volume of users on Safari, I want to drill down a bit here and see whether that 0.76 is pretty much average on all screen resolutions or there is a difference. And even by comparing the line number one and line number two, we can see that the conversion rate for this resolution is twice as good as line number one. I expect that uh, all of them are iOS users, so there shouldn't be much of a difference in a target group, but there's a lot of difference in conversion rate. So again, try to do the same exercise as for the Android and see the patterns there. Okay, looking on the line number five, we can see even like significantly higher conversion rate comparing to line number one. So try to spot the patterns if it's not, again, given by a specific thing, for example, not being displayed correctly on particular device, like as to card button or redirection to checkout doesn't work, or as said, that there can be another thousand reasons why is it so. This is the place where you should start by trying to do the same customer journeys as your users do using these devices. So this is the place where I would start. So that was it, guys. Try to do the same simple exercise by drilling down a bit, and you might be surprised how many screen resolutions for example you may find where we can improve your customer experience and then conversions so hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video all right pavel thanks for this great information if this video helped you out in any way then we'd love for you to hit that like button and if you want to find out more about google analytics then check out this playlist right over there where we have many different topics waiting for you now from everybody here at measure school happy measuring